Okay, let's consider this situation. Our string is tied from the ceiling, suppose, and this is a pendulum, and this pendulum is undergoing circular motion in horizontal direction like this. This kind of pendulum is called conical pendulum. I have not drawn a proper cone but I hope you would get the message. The length of the string is L and the radius of this horizontal circle supposes R. Now the question is if the bob of the pendulum is undergoing uniform circular motion then you find the velocity of the bob and you find the tension in the string. There's nothing new you just have to use the formula for centripetal force that's it. Okay so get your answer for velocity and tension. The velocity which you should get as this and tension you must get as this okay doing this is not something very great it's easy you just have to write the draw the fbd and you will know what are the forces acting on the bob? It's just tension and mg. So, if suppose this angle is theta, then this angle will also be theta and you can easily see that T cos theta is the vertical force and that must balance mg. And you would also see that T, cos, T sin theta is the only horizontal force acting on the bob. And this force must be the centripetal force. Right? So this must be equal to mv square upon r. Okay? So from here we will get tan theta is equal to v square upon rg. And from this figure we also can see that sin theta is r upon l. Okay, the so sine theta we know, so tan theta we know. So velocity can be easily found out. And similarly here from this equation, tension you can easily find out. You put the value of cos theta because you know sine theta from there here. You put here cos theta and you find tension and you will get the value of tension as this. So it's pretty basic. All you have to see that the horizontal force that if the bob is going in circular, uniform circular motion or in circular motion, then the horizontal force that will become the centripetal force. That's it. Okay. Now suppose there is a rod and there are two masks attached to the rod at both ends and this rod is undergoing suppose the undergoing horizontal circular motion across a vertical line the length this is L and this is L as well okay now the breaking strength of the rod suppose that is T naught if the rod has more than T naught of tension, then the rod will break. So the breaking strength of the rod is T naught. You have to find the maximum frequency with which the entire system could be rotated. Right? The rod is kept like this. It is rotating like this. So the maximum frequency with which it can be rotated. Find out. See, frequency, you know, you would understand that frequency is 1 upon time right and uh, omega is 2 pi upon t right omega is angular velocity angular velocity is the angular distance 2 pi it covers in one complete motion circular motion and time taken is capital T then omega is 2 pi f because f is 1 by t 
right now v squared upon r in this case it is v squared upon l because the radius of the circle for each mass is l that is equal to or the centripetal acceleration v square upon l or you can write it centripetal acceleration as omega square l now omega is 2 pi f so we get omega is 4 pi square f square into l and this must be equal to t naught because that is the breaking strength if you taking this as t naught will give us the maximum frequency and you can see from here what will be the maximum frequency it's no big deal f is will come out as this Okay, centripetal acceleration, that's it. If the rod is there, centripetal acceleration will be the tension in the rod, will be provided by the tension in the rod. If there's a string, centripetal acceleration will be provi provided by the tension in the string. If there is no rod, no string, there is just friction, then centripetal acceleration will be provided by the friction. Okay, now let's do a little bit of study of vertical circular motion.